Senator Stein, for a purpose of your eyes. To debate the bill. Senator Stein, you have the floor to debate the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, last year you all made a fundamental choice that dramatically affects this budget. You chose to create a half a billion dollar hole in this budget through tax giveaways to benefit large out-of-state corporations and wealthy folks who do not need that extra money. And you filled that hole by cutting public education to the tune of, a, again, a half a billion dollars over the biennium. Two-thirds of your giveaways goes to people whose average annual earnings are $1 million or more. So I'm talking about people in a year who earn a million dollars. Not a millionaire, but a person who in a single year earns a million dollars. 90% goes to the wealthiest 5%. These are people who, on average, earn half a million dollars or more. People who did well, unlike the middle class, even during the recession. Instead of trickled down, we should be building our economy from the middle out. That's when we're strongest as a state. That's when we're strongest as a nation. And having a strong educational system is essential to having a strong economy. Yet to finance this tax plan, you all froze teacher pay, dropping North Carolina to 46th in the nation in teacher compensation. You eliminated thousands of teacher positions and fired thousands more teacher assistants. You eliminated compensation for teachers who earn master's degrees. And this bill today does nothing to fix that on a going forward basis. You slashed the amount going to textbooks and other school resources. Not surprisingly, teacher morale is at the lowest point any of us can ever remember. They are fleeing the classrooms at unprecedented rates. You spent months trying to argue that you didn't actually cut public education, that you, teachers are actually adequately paid. But the people of North Carolina weren't buying what Ms. you were selling. Mr. President. So today, you offer this shell game of a budget. When we look at your budget's shiny proposal for teacher pay, we realize it's fool's gold, not the real thing. How are you paying? for this teacher pay proposal in your budget. Unbelievably, by cutting public education to the tune of $380 million, and by kicking 15,000 blind, disabled, and elderly, elderly people off of their health insurance, this budget is not about paying teachers a salary that reflects the importance of their work. This budget is trying to cloak your political vulnerability at the expense of our school kids. If you don't believe me, maybe you'll listen to the people whose jobs it is to administer and run our public schools. The State Association of School Administrators wrote to us last night, quote, the budget released by the NC Senate includes devastating cuts that will harm the learning experience for public school students across the state. It could lead to a loss of 10,000 or more school jobs and will negatively impact county budgets and taxpayers. Quote, proposed cuts to the teacher assistants and teachers in grades two and three hinder progress on the important goal of ensuring all third graders are reading proficient as called for under recent law changes. Students will also have fewer nurses, longer bus routes, and inadequate funding for textbooks. Y'all fired thousands of TAs last year, and of those you didn't fire, you're firing half of the remaining ones this year. 7,400 TAs are going to be out of their job. Kids are going to suffer as a result. At the same time, you're taking thousands of adults out of our K-1 classrooms. You're adding more kids. Y'all remember, I assume, the promise in last year's budget that you were going to reduce class size for the lower grades. That promise and the nearly three, 800, excuse me, 800 kindergarten and first grade teachers are evaporated at the stroke of a pen with this budget. So now we've got young students in classes with more kids and fewer adults, making it harder for teachers to teach and for kids to learn. We just passed yesterday legislation to improve the Read to Achieve law. Are we serious about helping young kids learn to read? because this budget is not. North Carolina is home to many dedicated professionals trying their utmost to make our schools the best they possibly can. One of those 
is Dr. Mark Edwards. He's superintendent of the Morrisville School System, president-elect of the North Carolina School Superintendents Association, and last year's national superintendent of the year, whole country. Dr. Edwards pleads that you sit down with him and other superintendents and come up with a right approach that doesn't cut into personnel and other resources that our students across the state need in order to learn. I mean, my gosh, even the teachers who you're trying to induce to stay in the classroom criticize this budget for what it is, quote, a political game and, quote, the biggest bait and switch scheme in state history. I mentioned earlier that your proposal will abandon 15,000 blind, disabled, and elderly recipients of Medicaid. Your response is that these folks can apply to the health insurance exchange from the Affordable Care Act, which is as ironic as it is unrealistic. These folks don't have sufficient income to benefit from the subsidies. You all know that just as well as we do. We can only conclude that you are indifferent to the blind, disabled, and elderly you are turning your back on. One of those 15,000 is a gentleman named Rick Kenworth, an elderly man with dementia living in an assisted living facility here in Raleigh. All three of his daughters work more than full time. But even with that, they simply could not afford to put their dad in the facility he currently resides in if they didn't have Medicaid. Nor would Mr. Kenworth be able to afford the medication he uses, he purchases with Medicaid. His daughter, Ann, is quoted in today's paper. This budget just sends a bad message that the legislators don't care about the elderly and their access to health care. I have more faith in North Carolina than that. Members, let us justify her faith. Let us draft a budget that has public input. Let us have a real process where subcommittees actually meet to discuss the budget, where the budget is delivered and we have time to review that budget, where the public has an opportunity to provide input to that budget, and where the process takes more than 48 hours to scream its way through this chamber. Let's eliminate the breathtaking changes in substantive law that you all have put in the special provisions part of this budget. Items like moving the SBI in the crime lab, like creating a new court system in the judiciary that violates separation of powers like ending community of care in North Carolina, a nationally recognized program for saving Medicaid dollars and providing important improvements in quality of care that Senator Richard Burr recently came down here and praised. Let's craft a budget that respects our teacher, a budget that creates a strong public schools, that positions our kids in North Carolina to succeed, and a budget that does not throw our fellow citizens who are blind, disabled, and elderly to the curb. Dr. Edwards, the superintendent, and Ms. Kenworth, the daughter, they deserve better. They're right. We can do better.